Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I got a question on my website at sublimenetworks.com under the contacts page. I have a link for the website uh, in the description below. But the question reads, uh, Hey George, I asked you a question in one of your videos, but not sure if you answered. Um, the question was, what made you change using GNS3 to CSRs for your CCIE studying? Uh, another thing is the V5 only requiring four switches with breakout switch included. So that's two questions. The first one is, why did I go with CSRs rather than GNS3? The biggest reason was the fact that uh, INE uses the CSR 1000 Vs. I was originally doing the labs, um, I believe all the way up to OSPF. I was doing all of it on the um, on GNS3. And I just found, uh, at least at the time, uh, 1.0 had just recently been released. And there were some bugs in there. And, you know, the capability of running 20 uh, CSRs was definitely uh, not, not appealing to me. I was having to troubleshoot way too often. So at the time, I only needed to run 10 routers, which was fine and perfect. And so that wasn't a big deal. But then I decided, you know what, if I really want to move forward... Uh, I, I need to invest in uh, in the CSR 1000V. So I bought myself a server uh, to to make that come true. And the CSRs worked incredibly well and uh, didn't have to worry about troubleshooting or anything like that. I, I thought it was great. The second part of your question was, um, so I, I'm assuming you're asking, does it require four switches and a breakout switch? So if you um, go to INE and you look at the designs, I think you could look up the CCIE version 5 uh, design, a lab design for, for INE online. And there's a couple of options that they give you. The only option that requires a breakout switch is if you're going to have physical routers. So ISR routers um, or whatever type of routers that you're going to purchase. Um, if you bought 20 of them, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, so all you would need to do is buy four switches uh, for INE's topology and then have one trunk link going up to your ESXi server. And then the ESXi server itself has a V switch, a virtual switch, where you connect all of your, your 10, 20 routers and it essentially trunks all those VLANs back to that switch one. So it, it works out pretty well. Uh, I think it, I mean, it worked flawlessly. I was able to create a lot of layer three networks uh, that way uh, uh, with uh, sub interfaces and the VLANs. So that's pretty much answers that question. So uh, hopefully that helps you out and um, hopefully that helps somebody else out there. So we'll talk later. Bye.